Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thanks for tuning in. Today's cereal is The Vigilante. It stars Ralph Boyd. Now, The Vigilante has had a long history in DC Comics. He shows up in stories over the years in World's Fair Comics, Action Comics, Adventure Comics, The Justice League, Bleeding Comics, and was part of The Seven Soldiers of Victory. A comic book was given away as a promotion for this cereal, but it seems to be made up mostly of reprints. So here we go with the first couple chapters of The Vigilante. I wish I could say that name right. The Vigilante. Here we go. Thanks, folks. us up on this location. Well, how about calling it a day, Sid? Well, there's a few chase scenes I'd like to get first right down the road here. Ah, oh, forget it. The horse is tired and so am I. Oh, we can 
wind it up in an hour or two, Greg. Well, why not do it tomorrow? We've done enough for today. Well, how's it going, Sid? Why, just fine, George. We're just finishing up. We certainly appreciate the use of your ranch here as a location. Oh, I was glad to accommodate you. Nice having you around. I hope you'll be able to make my party Saturday afternoon, Mr. Sanders. I think so, Mr. Pierce, and thanks for inviting me. I'm throwing a little shindig to welcome my house guest, Prince Emil of Aravania. He arrives tomorrow. Drop in Saturday afternoon if you can, Sid. Thanks, George. I'll be glad to. Well, I'm going to run along. I'd still like to get those few scenes. Tomorrow, Sid. Tag it on tomorrow's schedule. See you Saturday. Okay. Temperamental stars. That's what we've got to put up with. Come on, On horseback at that. <laughs> proof you're looking for at the Atmos garage. Great. That's what we need to break the hot car racket. Can you come right away? I'll be on my way as quick as I can change my clothes. Stall them until I get there. All right, I'll wait here at the garage. Here they come. Andy here tells me there's nothing wrong with your car. Well, that certainly is good news. Is it? Well, sure. Stop playing straight. Why'd you bring that car in here? Well, uh, I thought the fuel pump needed fixing. This jalopy's got a new pump. And it also has a two-way radio all hooked up. Don't mean to tell me you're a copper. I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> Tough, eh? You gonna come clean, or do we have to squeeze it out of here?
work stuff. Thanks, vigilante. There's a workshop in the back. You'll find all the evidence we need. Playing in hot cars. While I take a look, you phone the police. Right. Hello, operator. This is an emergency. Give me the police department. Quick. Police headquarters. Sergeant Michael Downey speaking. Hello? Hello, police headquarters. Is this the police headquarters? That's what I've been saying. Sergeant McEldowney speaking. And if you're trying to make a goat out of me, I'll... Uh, <clears throat> one of our boys uh, just woke up. He had to be put back to sleep. What do you think this is? A day nursery? This is the police headquarters. Well, if you'll send a squad over to the Atlas Garage on 3rd Street, you can put the hot car racket boys in jail. What's that? Atlas Garage. Hot car racket. We'll be right over. Good. When the police arrive, show them what's back there. Here, you might need this. Well, aren't you gonna stay? No, I think it's best they don't learn the identity of the vigilante. What'll I tell them about all these? Well, tell them you did it, stuff. Do you think they'll believe me? Well, you're delivering the evidence, aren't you? Hey, maybe they'll give me a medal. You think? Sure they will. And after they send it on you, meet me at the house, huh? Right. jail and left two policemen there at the garage to guard the evidence. Good work, Stuff. Now I think I'd better report to that gentleman in Washington. This is Department 87, Washington. Barrow speaking. Greg Sanders reporting. The hot car case is wound up. We located the headquarters of the outfit today and found evidence involving several of the garages. The police have it. I'll air mail a full report tonight. Good work, Greg. Glad you wound it up so quickly. We have another assignment for you. Hey, wait a minute. Don't I get a vacation after this picture's finished? Not quite yet. This new assignment's out there, too. You mean I have to go along with it? Temporarily, yes. The prairie troubadour is an excellent disguise. Now, this is the setup. Do you know a man named George Pierce? Yes, very well. He owns a high-class nightclub out in the suburbs and also has a ranch estate in the valley. He's the man. A certain Prince Hamil is going to visit him. Hamil owns a fortune in red pearls. They were not found when he went to the customs, but we have a definite tip that he brought them with him. It's your job to find them. Very well, sir. Good night. Well, another job.
was in the office at the Atlas Garage this afternoon. He left just before you got there. Are you sure about that? I'm positive. I'll never forget that face. I beg your pardon, but have we met somewhere before? That's an old line, Mac. What are you selling? Maybe second-hand cars at the Atlas Garage. I don't get it. And they didn't get you this afternoon, did they? I don't know what you're talking about. Wrong again. I speak the same language you do. What are you trying to pin on me? Nothing. It's already been pinned on you. on his own estates. He wishes to say a few words about them. His Highness, Prince Hamil. My friends, I wish these five horses to become an expression of my sincere gratitude for the generous treatment I have received in your country. The first one I wish to present to that celebrated and talented Rodeo star, Miss Betty Winslow. 
I hope you will accept it with my humble admiration. Oh, that's wonderful of you, Your Highness. I'll never be able to thank you enough. To see you riding would be sufficient thanks. The second for you, Captain Riley. Your love for horses is well known, even to me. Thanks, Your Highness. A gift will be highly prized, I assure you. The third one I hope to see written in the motion pictures by that famous cowboy star, Greg Saunders. Will you accept? I certainly will, and thank you very much, Your Highness. And for your text, Collier, the fourth horse, which I dare hope you will offer as a prize to the winner of your annual race at the Breeding Ranch. Thank you, Your Highness. A thousand thanks. Never have I been able to offer such a prize. And last, but uh, let me add, uh, not in the least, my good friend and host, Mr. George Pierce. Will you honor me by accepting this gift? Thank you, Your Highness. Until you fortunate people have arranged to remove your horses, uh, they may remain in my corral. gentlemen, for your entertainment, I'm going to call on one of the happy people. Someone I'm sure you've all heard and enjoyed, but not always in person. But now he's ours in the flesh. The Prairie Troubadour, Greg Sanders. All right, Greg, there's your guitar. I want to talk to you right away. I'll meet you at the stables. San Antonio is down in cattle country where the cowboys work along the range. Six long days they slave, tough and strong and brave, but Saturday is payday and that's a puncher's heyday. Cowboys free Saturday night in San Antonio. All day long they work the pay just to throw it all away. Saturday night in San Antonio. It's around the old Ace High Saloon. The puncher finds his thrills, but he walks to church on Sunday noon, chewing a box of headache pills. If I live to 91, I'll remember all the fun. Saturday night in San Antonio. Cowboy hands play ragtime jazz and they're full of old pizzazz. Saturday night in San Antonio. Great big men with nerves of steel shiver around that roulette wheel. Saturday night in San Antonio. For a while the boys just sit and play as peaceful as can be. Not get in the way when someone says the drink's on me. Up as far as I away, they can hear the hip hooray Saturday night in San Antonio. You're a clumsy fool, Hammond. You've let a fortune slip away from us. Is it my fault his highness changed his mind? You said it was all arranged. And so it was. It was planned all five horses were to be a gift to you. Well, that certainly wasn't what happened. Well, evidently his highness changed his mind. He did not confide in me. You should have made it your business to know. You suggest that I influence my master's decisions? Such a thing is impossible. Well, anyway, you bungled everything. Maybe you had a reason. I don't understand. I wouldn't put it past you to try to cheat me out of my share. You probably planned it this way. You dare to accuse me? You infidel?
this curse of one hundred tears of blood. hundred tears of blood? What do you mean? What are they? Tell those to whom horses were given, there is curse on them. solve the mystery surrounding these white horses? Is there an evil fate which threatens their present owners? Don't miss Mystery of the White Horses, the second thrilling chapter of The Vigilante at this theater next week. Prince Emil presents five white horses to guests at the Pierce Ranch. Fire breaks out in a barn. Trying to help Hamid, the prince's aide, who's been attacked by an unidentified man, Stuff is trapped by the fast-spreading flame. And this curse of 100 tears of blood. 100 tears of blood? What do you mean? What are they? Tell those to whom horses were given. There is curse on them. As soon as I get some of this smoke out of my lungs. Why, that's one of Prince Emile's men. Hamid is dead, Your Highness. He must have been kicked by a horse. Do you see the imprint of a horseshoe, Captain Riley? Yes, I do. Poor Hamid loved horses. He gave his life trying to save them. I'll know to find a corner. Don't move the body. This is terrible, Your Highness. I, I don't know what to say. It's not your fault, Mr. Pierce. I know, but I feel responsible. And no doubt it was an accident, Mr. Pierce. You're not to blame. I suppose not. What were you doing in there, and what happened? Plenty. I've got something to tell you. It wasn't a horse that killed that fellow Hammond. There were no horses in the stable. Then what killed him? The fellow he was fighting with hit him with a horseshoe. Who was it? I don't know. I couldn't see his face. I still don't know what you were doing in there. Well, I was on my way to the corral to see the horses, and I heard a fight in the stables. I tried to get in, but the door was bolted from the inside, so I climbed up into the loft. Then you're sure about the fight? 
Positive. I saw Hammond get knocked down. Was he alive when you got to him? Yes. He was muttering something about, uh, this is the curse of the hundred tears of blood. Hmm. That sounds oriental. Well, I asked him what it meant, and he said, uh, tell those to whom the Aravanian horses were given that there's a curse on them. Perhaps the prince could explain it. Perhaps. But I doubt if he would, to any of us, at least. for the death of the unfortunate Hamid. Perhaps you're right, Raven. I will try to dismiss it from my mind. Good night. Good night, Your Highness. circumstances. Before your aide Hamid died, he uttered a strange expression, but perhaps it's not strange to you. What was the expression? The curse of the hundred tears of blood. What does that mean? I'm sorry, but the answer to that you'll have to seek elsewhere. Are you trying to conceal something, Your Highness? You enter my quarters mysteriously and make strong accusations. Perhaps I'm only trying to match your attitude when you refuse to answer a simple question. Is it the hundred tears of blood you speak of? It is. That I cannot explain. Now, may I beg you to leave? Very well, Your Highness. But you may regret your refusal to offer an explanation. occupying the garage? That's right. So many things have happened today, I forgot about it.
all, sir. Report. We had trouble at Sanders. He discovered us as we were about to get the horse. He chased us, but we got away by dropping the trailer in an alley and blocking his way. As long as you were not caught, no special harm has been done. Here is your next assignment. Tomorrow, Greg Sanders will use his new horse at the location where he's making a motion picture. Be there. Now watch your chance to accomplish your mission. We'll be there. That's all. I was wondering how Betty Winslow is going to like you as a drugstore cowboy. Well, as long as nobody suspects I'm not one, we should worry. Well, nobody will find out you're the vigilante if I can help. That's the spirit. Keep them guessing. sure you telephoned Greg Sanders? Yes, sir. Well, if that ham actor thinks he can get away with holding up my production by being late, he's mistaken. Good morning, Sid. Oh, good morning, George. Well, what's the trouble? Your star performer missing? Yes, temporarily. He'd be missing permanently if I owned this company. <laughs> Evidently, you don't think very much of his acting. Acting? <laughs> These days, all you have to do is take a good-looking fellow, give him a nice pair of boots, a ten-gallon hat, a fancy horse, and you've got yourself a new star. <laughs> Well, Sanders certainly has all those things, since my house guest, Prince Emil, presented him with one of those white Arabian horses. Well, there's your star. Ten-gallon hat, white horse and all. Yes, and most of the day will be wasted taking stills of him in that white horse. All for a picture, Greg. See what I mean? Now, what the company wants with a lot of stills of a white horse just because it was given by a prince is beyond me. Well, maybe there are white horses and white horses. Well, you can have them. All of them, including those of royal blood. <laughs> All right, Archie. Get everybody on the set. One more now. All in. Thank you. We're all ready, Greg. I'll be right with you. And the boss is on the warpath this morning. What, again? You better get in the car with some stuff. Good morning, Greg. Hello, George. Maestro. Greg, this is the sequence of the gunfight. Uh, three heavies waiting for you behind that big rock over there. Now, in action, I want you to ride into the trap and start shooting. You get it? I think so. You want to double for this shot? No, I can do it. Okay, there's your horse. Mount up and get ready.
Gee, we'll have that whole movie company down here. We'll take care of him. What's the big idea? Well, we were... I'll tell you. Mysterious X-1 sends agents to acquire the white horse presented to Greg Sanders. Intercepting the prairie troubadour as he returns from his motion picture work with Stuff and Betty, the men tamper with the horse trailer connection. But their plans go suddenly awry as... I see. Well, if that's all it is, we'd like to be on our way. All right. Now, you take it easy, like I told you.
drop, wasn't it? It's like if he fell into the water. Yeah, but it was awful hard, Warden. The horse seems to be okay. Here comes Betty. Ray, stop. Are you all right? We're okay. It'll take more than a high dive like that to put us out of business. I wonder what caused that trailer to break away. I don't know. Defective coupling, I guess. Come on, boy. sure went haywire. Yeah. Say, you'd better get me back to my car before they get wise to us. the license number of that coupe? Not yet. Oh, 7 T 8 3 1 7. Now that we know the trailer deal was no accident, I've an idea who those men were after. Oh, you. Me! Yes. This all ties in with the death of Prince Emile's aide at Pierce's ranch and the curse of the hundred tears of blood that Hamid spoke of before he died. You mean because I was in Pierce's stables when that Aravanian was killed? Yes. Whoever murdered him may be afraid that you can identify him. Swell. I hope that's a call we're waiting for. Sam, you're speaking. Oh, yes. Okay, Jim. Yes, let's have it. No, don't send out an alarm. I want to investigate. Okay. Goodbye. Got a line on that car? I don't know yet. Lanzano Reynolds, is this the owner? Yeah, this is Herman Lenz speaking. Do you have a coupe license number 7T8317? And if so, I'd like to know to whom you last rented it. Who is this? The police? No, this is not the police. And I can't give you the information. Hung up on you, huh? This is X-13. Let me talk to X-1. X-1 speaking. We're not getting to first base this way. But there's another way. Right. If it's who I think it is, he'll try again. He may even visit you. If he does, be prepared for him.
start shooting. Did you catch him? No. 
say, he must be good to get away from you. Cut out the flattery. Have you seen Betty? Yeah, she wants us to come over to the arena to see the special performance she's given for Prince Emil. All right, let's go. And keep a sharp lookout for that fellow. Set? Yeah, I got all the dope on the girls act. Good. We gotta watch out for Greg Sanders. I just ran into him down here. Well, if I run into him, I'll take care of him. Come on, let's go. It was very kind of you, Miss Winslow, to have arranged this special performance just for me. I'm quite honored. I appreciate it too, Betty. Well, you're both very welcome, I assure you. And I hope you enjoy the act. and stuff accomplish against the powerful forces arrayed against them. Can the vigilante, alone and unaided, solve this mystery? Be sure to see Desperate Flight, the fourth action chapter of The Vigilante, at this theater next week.
Betty Winslow's horse is stolen while she's engaged in her thrilling act at the rodeo. In the excitement, the horses drawing the stagecoach on which Betty is riding run away. As she tries desperately to control them, and Greg Sanders tries to aid her... away in a truck. I tried to stop him, but I couldn't. Any idea where they're headed? One of them said something about Hidden Valley. That's a clue. Think you can get back okay, Betty? Sure. And thanks again for your help. All right. that you should give up this dangerous business. Well, thanks for your interest, George, but I couldn't do that. Very well. Goodbye. Bye. on a motorcycle. I'll stay here and take care of it. You go on to the ranch.
going to knock them both. Really? Why not? We need them to change that tire. Come on. You two have work to do. Let's go. And there was sense to catch the truck. I tried to stop him, but couldn't. And there's nothing I can do about it. Maybe he won't catch it. But if he does, we'll be prepared. Stay where you are. I'll send some men out. You got here. Wall and Mark will probably be on their way to jail by now. Let's walk and we got here as quick as we could. Hold it. There's our truck. Hey, this is a break. Wall and Mark are probably tied up in there. Let's find out. should get together. Perhaps we can pool our ideas and find a solution to this mystery. It is my belief that the death of the Princess A. Ahmed, the attacks on Miss Winslow and Greg are part of one scheme. But what's the connecting link? The motive? It must be tied up with the horses. Yet nothing's happened to me or to the horse the Prince gave me. Well, perhaps His Highness has some ideas on the matter. Very quickly, I cannot shed the smallest light on this riddle as much as I desire to do so. Just before Hammett died, he uttered a very strange expression. Perhaps you can tell us what it means. What was the expression? A hundred tears of blood. Those are very strange words. I wish I could be of some help. Has anyone an idea who's behind all this or what motives they might have? Whoever it is doesn't stop at murder. But how can we defend ourselves, Captain? Well, I'll give all the protection I can with what men I have. And the horses also must be guarded. That's right. And we must all watch for a clue. There's bound to be one sometime. Greg, you've been closer on the trail than any of us. Have you formed any suspicions? No. I might hazard a guess, but this isn't a guessing matter. It's much too serious. Meanwhile, our main concern is Betty, to see that nothing happens to her. Well, Greg has been doing a pretty good job of that. <laughs> so I see. <laughs> Very sorry, sir. Thank you, Jason. Come along, folks.
whether you heard what was said. None of it was very definite. I know, but I felt that you didn't say everything that was on your mind. Are you accusing me of withholding information? Well, you were unusually quiet. Only by listening do we learn. All right, then. What did you learn? Well, trying to pin me down, huh? Trying, but getting nowhere. Well, one thing I'm sure of. What's that? Nothing's going to happen to you if I can prevent it. Well, I'll be satisfied with that. Silver? Yes, X-1. The men are on their way. I trust no hint of our plans has been allowed to leak out. Well, I don't see how it could. It has happened before, and it must not occur again. I'll see that it doesn't. Be sure that you do. This mysterious person who calls himself the vigilante is most dangerous to our plan. He must be unmasked and removed. This Greg Sanders hasn't been any help to us either. He is a playboy. We have nothing to fear from him. It is this vigilante we must be on guard against. He must be eliminated. I'll pass the order on to the men. If you find an opportunity to execute the order yourself, I am sure you will not hesitate. I won't. You can lay odds on it. That is all. Needed rest. I will, and thanks again for everything. You're welcome. Good night. Good night.
Pierce responsible for this new threat to Betty's safety? How will Greg escape from this death trap? Don't miss In the Gorilla's Cage, the fifth smashing chapter of The Vigilante at this theater next week. Suspecting that an attempt is to be made to steal the two white horses stabled at the carnival, Greg Sanders again assumes the identity of the mysterious vigilante. Finding that the guard has been overpowered, the vigilante daringly engages his attackers and...
Winslow and George Pierce will be at the Motion Picture Company's location today. They'll be riding the white Erevanian horses presented to them by Pierce's house guest, Prince Hamil. I still want the Winslow girl's horse. There'll be a lot of people out there, and it doesn't look like a good chance to get it. The fact that the horses are exactly alike should suggest a method. Yes, I, I believe I understand. I trust that you do. And we'll see that the mission is properly executed. I will. That's all. What's up, Silver? A little trip for you and Merce left me. Out to where that drugstore cowboy, the prior troubadour, is doing his stuff on that movie location. <laughs>
promised to switch saddles, but apparently didn't complete the job. Why would anyone want to do that? That's just another one of those questions, Betty. It's in line with all the other mysterious things that have been happening. First my stable's burning, and then you almost being killed that day in the trailer. I wonder who's behind all this. Well, let's not worry about that now. Think of me. I've got a picture to finish. Here. Switching saddles on those horses sure worked out, right to the letter. You boys crow too soon. I don't get you. We followed Silver's orders. We sure did. Switched everything on both horses. Everything except the blanket under my saddle. That little blunder started Betty Winslow to thinking. X-1 wants to see you, Mr. Pierce. Thank you. Take the blame for your mistakes. We'll all go. Hmm. Nice, Craig. So, 
Sanders. Yeah. We better take care of him before we try to get that horse. All right. guards there, it will be impossible to get the horse. But it's our master's order. We can do just so much. He does not wish us to be killed. Then we must release the girl. Say, you didn't want to stay and pinch hit a while, would you? No, thanks. Include me out. Aren't you going to put the lights out? Got to leave mine. Bongo sure hates the dark. See you later, Jackson. Good night, stuff. Sinister forces dare even to attack the stronghold of a law? What is the meaning of this mad chase through the night? See what happens in Battling the Unknown, Chapter 6 of The Vigilante, at this theater next week.
believing that Greg Sanders threatens his plans, the unknown and sinister X-1 sends men to dispose of it. Daddy Winslow, fleeing from a mysterious encounter with Prince Hamil's servants, discovers the attempt on Greg's life and is herself involved in deadly danger as... about it's Greg. Well, what about him? He's all right. But he can't be. I saw him fighting with two men and one of them shot him. Well, I know he's all right. I saw him afterwards chasing the guy that shot at him. Are you sure? Oh, I'm positive. He's probably caught him by now. Miss Winslow, you recognize the 
this man, do you not? Yes, I do. How about you, Greg? I recognize him, all right. You're being held on suspicion of assault with attempt to kill. If you know what's good for you, you'll cooperate with us. You're scaring me to death. Why did you and your accomplice try to kill Miss Winslow and Mr. Sanders? I'm not talking. I'm standing on my constitutional rights. What's the name of your partner? John Doe. Good morning, Betty. Greg. Hello. Good morning, Captain. Mr. Collier and I are here as you requested. Thank you. What's it all about, Captain? It's about this man's arrest. I think we all have an interest in his case. This man, whose name is Merck, attempted to kill Miss Winslow and Greg Sanders last night. Since this all seems connected with the Aravanian horses given each of us by Prince Emil, I felt that both of you gentlemen were vitally concerned. We certainly are, Captain. Have either of you ever seen this man before? Not to my recollection. How about it, Mr. Pierce? I don't think so. In fact, I'm quite sure I've never seen him before. Monroe, take him away. I'd hoped you might have some clue as to who is giving Merck his orders. It's certain he isn't smart enough to be working on his own. Haven't you been able to make him talk? Not yet, but I expect he will before long. Well, this hasn't been a very productive meeting. I'm sorry you all were put to the trouble of coming in. Quite all right, Captain. Thanks a lot. Something's the matter with my carburetor. Did you got a flashlight? Sure. Would you mind? 
mind shining it down in there for me, please? Take that long road up ahead.
stopped just this side of that turn. mystery of the shoes worn by the white horses. What has brought Betty Winslow to this midnight rendezvous? For the answers, see Midnight Rendezvous, Chapter 7 of The Vigilante, at this theater next week. Hello, back already. This is Don O'Malley again with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show, and you're watching The Vigilante with Ralph Boyd. So tune in next week for more chapters. Uh, and if you can, go to YouTube, Donald O'Malley, and hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you very much. So good night, folks. See you next week. Stay safe.